now we're going to hear from some of those committees that, uh, about some of the things they're working on. We heard of, uh, about from them uh, last time in October when they were all sort of just getting uh, off the ground and going. And now we're going to get some reports on what they've been doing and what they're focusing on. And Mike Sheline, who's been my, I don't even know what we call you, my coordinator at the AG Task Force, uh, he's been with, with me for a long, long time now. And is, uh, is Carrie here today? There she is. Carrie is my other co-chair, uh, our co-worker co on this. So uh, those two are the ones that you would go to if you have questions. And Kathy Yoakum, uh, I'm sorry, Carolyn Bevins in the back. You've all met Carol, Carolyn Bevins in the back. She's the person you go to to sign up for anything. And uh, again, this will be the last time I come up to say anything to you because Michael's going to take it from here. But I thank all of you for taking the time to drive some of you long distances to get here. <coughs> But I hope you take these messages back. Uh, again, we might be creating our own problem in that you may have more applicants than you can begin to handle, but that hopefully will generate more funding and more classes. And uh, we hope to spread the model of the police officers at, in Columbus to every single city. So we thank you for that presentation. And I'm excited about the Threat Assessment School Responder Program. I think all of these are wonderful ideas that I hope every one of you take back and spread in your own agencies, associations, and communities. Um, being from the crime victim section at the AG's office, I really want to echo the importance of the therapy dogs. And where we have really seen this is in our child advocacy centers throughout the state. And it's been amazing to watch that grow as more and more centers have gotten their dogs and in many places like Summit County, for instance, those dogs are often allowed to be with a young person who is testifying in a courtroom. And I think primarily it's been a lot easier for us to go and visit uh, these centers, which can sometimes be rather difficult, uh, and have the dogs there for us as well. And it's almost become where we know these prog programs now by the dogs' names. So it's like Otto's program or Max's <laughs> programs even though we know there are some great humans there that do a lot of great work. At this time, I'm going to kind of go through the various subcommittees, and we're going to start with diversion and reentry. Some of the things that we will be working on uh, that connect with Recovery Ohio is uh, number 62, attention to reentry and reintegration. That makes sense. That's, that's kind of what our, our group is. We're also looking at specialty courts, which is number 58. 51, which is reducing transportation barriers, and the last one is 43, telemedicine. Uh, just some quick updates with specialized dockets. Uh, the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, as Justice Tryon said, we receive uh, funds in the budget to, to provide funding for the specialized dockets across Ohio. We are now up to providing funding to 189 of those dockets, which is an increase of uh, 51 this fiscal year. We do still have some funds available, so if you know of any dockets in your area or in your community, uh, you may want to talk to them and ask them if they are receiving funds from our department, because if not, they may be eligible to receive those funds. Uh, next, CIT expansion. Also, our department receives funding to expand uh, CIT throughout the state of Ohio. We're excited to be working with the Criminal Justice CCOE and Ruth Samara to do that work. Uh, we're looking to offer additional scholarships and different uh, additional trainings across Ohio to continue to, uh, to get more people involved and more officers trained in CIT. Uh, a couple more things. The jail psychotropic medication reimbursement program is in full swing. Uh, jails have until February 15th to apply for funding. Uh, we have seen an intake in the number of requests for reimbursement, which is a really good thing. Uh, we went from the first half of last year of $800,000 in requests to the second half of last year of over $1.2 million. Uh, so we are seeing jails using, uh, taking advantage of that more and more. I have received approximately about 20 to 25 requests, and those are coming in every day. And lastly, our community transition program is in full swing. Our Adam boards now are overseeing that program. This is a program that helps individuals coming out of prison with uh, behavioral health disorders. And we will be looking at how to do more inreach into the prisons to uh, make sure that when those individuals are coming out of prison, they're more engaged and more likely to continue services. My name is Steve Terrell. And myself and uh, Carrie Bartunic is uh, the AG's 
Director of External Affairs, our co-chairs. Uh, in our last six months of being a new committee, we've been focused on building membership and determining our priorities. So we have had a, a couple face meetings, we had several conference calls, and we have built to 28 members. We were kind of surprised about all the interest. And it's a group of diverse folks from volunteers like myself and others and those from state organizations, local organizations, certain professions. And um, I'm really, really excited because we've got a lot of energy, we've got a lot of passion, and we've got a lot of commitment to make a difference. So we determined four focus areas. Uh, one is on increasing and helping determine mental health training for the foster care system. You may know that Governor DeWine's, one of his first executive orders was to look at that and establish a transformation group in job and family services. So we're beginning to work with JFS and that, that committee and also with the Children's Initiative program under the governor and look at programs and how we can help foster caregivers and the biological parents too. Um, we've, we've, if you haven't, you have a chance, they're having the regional forums. And the one we visited here in Columbus, we heard from what they call graduates of the system. These are folks in their 20s, and they basically, you think they would whine and, and be the victim? They weren't. They were very positive. They told their stories, which were not always as you can imagine, good. But they state it in such a way that, hey, here's a problem and here's some solutions that need to be considered. So I'm really excited about this focus area. The second one is around increasing and helping uh, determine mental health training in the justice system. These could be parole officers, case workers, et cetera. Uh, third group is working to explore initial and continue mental health education opportunities for commissioned peace officers. Uh, initial work is centering around what can be done and where to direct the resources to move the needle for law enforcement. Fourth area is around stigma, and that's working with other organizations who have programs and how we can determine gaps, enhance the programs, and help move that to, because we know that stigma is one of the greatest obstacles that we see in mental health across the, all populations. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we realize education is a broad subject and we are reaching out to other subcommittees and organizations, you know, to hope, hopefully align, reduce redundancy and sync up with our efforts, with their efforts. My name is Colin Craig. I'm with the Ohio Housing Finance Agency, one of the co-chairs along with um, Katie Kitchen, who is the executive director of the Corporation for Supportive Housing. Uh, of course, access to uh, housing, uh, stable housing with services, uh, creates better outcomes for individuals with mental illness uh, or in recovery or those who are leaving institutional settings. Uh, so we have a good cross-sector committee uh, made up of members like CSH, uh, the Coalition on Homelessness and Housing in Ohio, Mental Health and Addiction Services, uh, ODRC, uh, etc. Uh, we've had several meetings in the last few months uh, in September, October, and December. Uh, we've had some presentations from uh, and participation from individuals with lived experience. Uh, and we have uh, put together as a committee some draft policy recommendations uh, related to housing uh, for your review, which I think uh, you have that at your table. Um, these have been circulated to but not officially approved by the Housing Committee. Uh, so kind of next steps are to finalize uh, recommendations, uh, start tackling some of the low-hanging fruit, those things that we can do uh, either administratively or through collaboration with local uh, and state partners. Uh, and then, of course, potentially put together some recommendations for funding uh, as the administration ramps up uh, its next uh, biennium budget process. And then, of course, work with the legislative committee if there's anything on our list uh, that could work there. So. Um, our next meeting is at the Ohio Housing Finance Agency on Thursday, March 5th from 1 to 3. If you're interested in participating, you can email me directly 
uh, at kcraig at ohiohome.org, or of course email Carolyn, uh, and we'd be happy to have you participate. I won't read through these recommendations for you since we're short on time, but you have those. Feel free to provide any input, uh, any constructive criticism or suggestions for additions. We'd be happy to hear it. Hi, everyone. My name is Charlene Boland. Um, Emily Palfrey is the other co-chair, but she's in a hearing today. Um, and so we our three, um, our three focus areas align with numbers 63 and 64 in the Recovery Ohio report. We are still in the information gathering stage to be able to um, better lay out the plans that we want to uh, go through the next year. Um, so for reviewing the transition process for youth who are committed to prison, we are working on a survey of a sample um, number of courts throughout the states to learn more throughout the state to learn more about records that are kept and are sent with kids when they go to prison. Um, another one of the focus areas is improving the reclaim program, which is sort of a, a big goal. Um, so what we are doing right now is thinking about ways that we can help to collect and collate information. A lot of the juvenile courts around the state have very good pilot programs for diversion and other treatment. Um, programs that they're working on. Some of those are through Reclaim, some of those are outside of Reclaim, so thinking about a way to collect that information so courts can draw on best practices from each other. And then finally, exploring best practices for crossover youth. Um, we are learning more about the Family First implementation, so that will help us um, to further think about good ideas for us for that, um, that final focus area. And I did make a note from Justice Stratton's point about the SRO guidelines, so that's something that we'll also be taking a look at. And our next meeting is April 3rd. My name's Robin Matthews. I'm with the Attorney General's Office. Our committee has really been focusing on two things. We continue to work on the issue of competency restoration for those charged with misdemeanors. And then more recently, we've been working with the Specialized Docket Committee around the issue of long-acting injectables. While I'm up here, I just wanted to take the time to Thank everybody. Um, I will be stepping away from my role as the chair as a result of additional responsibilities with my employment, but wanted to take the opportunity to thank everybody for the opportunity to meet some wonderful people, make some great connections, and to work on some really important issues. Uh, hopefully, a new chair will be selected in the near future. Uh, in the meantime, I will continue to work with Dr. Hunter in terms of transitioning. Um, and please know that you have a supporter, a big supporter in all the work that you do. So thank you all very much. Also on the OMAS website is, the, is information on the OES um, Health, Ohio Healthy Youth Environment Survey, which could also be pretty important. It has some great information on um, youth that were surveyed about a variety of issues, including mental health and substance abuse issues. Um, recommendation number 39 is um, has to do with streamlining information sharing which is kind of what we're talking about here it's just finding the best way of getting information to you um, and pulling lots of sources together at, into one one site that we found that was pretty um, that seems pretty comprehensive which you might find um, a value is something called relink relink.org if you haven't come across that yet it's a free searchable portal to uh, connect people who are struggling with addiction and um, with local health providers. Um, it was created by the Dalton Foundation up in the, the uh, northeastern Ohio area, and it has, right now, it has over 7,000 providers in there. So it's a great source of getting, a, there's a bunch of information in one site, um, relink.org. We've already talked about the, um, the grants that are available through OCJS, so the RSAT grant on substance abuse, also um, the Justice Assistance Grant, known as JAG, and the VAWA, or Violence Against Women Grant. Um, so pick up a flyer or go to the OCJS website to get more information on that. And then I wanted to finally um, welcome Natalie Bonfine, so from the Coordinating Center of Excellence, so she's the new co-chair, so you'll be seeing her around quite a bit. and. Um, our, our next committee meeting, I think, is in April. It's like the fourth Thursday in April, and I believe it's on the, um, the task force website. My name is Carrie Hertel. I am in the Attorney General's office. I am working with Michael Shaleen and Carolyn Bevins um, to support the task force um, from within the Attorney General's office. I was also a previous co-chair of the Specialized Docket Committee, and neither um, Marissa McKistry or Judge Holly could be here today, so they have asked me to give the quick update in their absence. Um, 
The DACA committee uh, met last November, and as Justice Stratton and Robin Matthews have already mentioned, um, they're working with the Treatment and Psychiatry Committee um, to learn more and identify barriers to jails and using the long-active psychotropic uh, uh, psychiatric medications. Um, the committee is also working on a survey to send out by the end of February to specialized dockets and other courts to find out about what kind of barriers there are to uh, to having these in your communities. Um, I, I think some of us know what the barriers might be, but it would be a good thing to have that kind of data. So we're working a little bit with the Ohio Supreme Court and their specialized docket group um, to put that together. Uh, and again, the, uh, the committee is planning to meet again in March, and they'll send out a notification. And I know there's always a call-in number, um, and it's always on our website. Richard Stobbs. I'm with the Attorney General's Office. I'm the Director of Veterans Services. And our committee is uh, December 20th. We had a teleconference, kind of get to know each other, talk over some issues. We had a subcommittee meeting January 16th. Jim Robinson. Jim, would you stand up? Uh, He's got a program called Employee Veteran Readiness Training. It deals with PTSD in the workplace, getting along with management. And in the big picture, I think this is going to help with preventing suicide. We're going to have another teleconference meeting uh, in the near future. We're going to focus on our specific goals. And uh, one of them, we're talking about veteran suicide. Another one that just came up recently is issues with women veterans. There's a lot of issues there. We, we want to put some more emphasis on that. So I want to thank our uh, law enforcement committee and, and Mark Porter for putting today, today's program together. Um, and I think other groups that are committees that are going to select, you have a hard act to follow because it's going to be based on how many chairs we have to pull out of the closet uh, <laughs> besides the table. So if we could give them a round of applause and thank them for their presentation. And soon we'll have the next date out. And if you have any ideas, please email Carolyn for kind of our next theme. Thank you.